TT20, gone. TT21, gone. TT22, Ian Locker. What do you make of it all? Hello, and nice to see you again. Yeah, and you, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Hope uh, everybody's doing okay. It's been a a long, strange time, isn't it? Um, got my neck. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to make of it. Really, just uh, can't wait to get get to a race meeting again and do some stuff. <laughs> when was the last time you sat on a bike and, and did something? Um, I did Scarborough yeah. two thousand. Yeah, last year two thousand twenty. <laughs> Um, <laughs> two meetings at Scarborough uh, was the last time. So September, um, and I'm heading to Scarborough for next weekend. Okay, that's the, obviously the Spring Cup, which is a bit later yeah. than than normal, and obviously yeah. things are starting slowly to get back to normal. But what have you been doing in the meantime? Obviously, bright preparation in the garage in the shed. What have you been up to? Yeah, um, a few different things. I got a few, well, quite a lot of um, old. RS 250, TZ 250s, sort of restoring them a little bit. I'm not a really a restorer, but I'm doing my best. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that bit of that bit of. Um, I've got a CBR 600, which I've got. Uh, it's a 2021 bike, Ooh. which they're not bringing to uh, the UK officially, you know, because of because um, nobody buys 600s anymore. So which is a real shame. Um, but it'd be a good bike for. Um, in the Japanese market, they're using it over there and in the Asian market. So we decided to bring one across and um, see how we try and do, you know, try and get a rider on it for the stock 600 and the BSV maybe, or for the Aleman next year or something. But I haven't got a rider yet anyway. Um, and we've been struggling for parts, obviously, because it's, nobody's making any parts as such, only Honda. Um, it's been difficult to get it ready and up and running. Um, so I'm hoping maybe july or august to try and get it out with a with a good young lad on it for stock 600 maybe or something just to get it out there and see how we go you know and we've had it on the dyno it's, it's very good okay. so um yeah we're getting there we're still waiting for fairings and bits and pieces so uh that's been keeping me busy and, and to be honest it's been really been quite nice you know because uh not getting bikes and you know getting in there i, I enjoy going in the workshop anyway when it's when it warms up a bit um so the winter's not been very nice, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's been nice to you know get on with something and something new and something different, you know, and there'd be a lot of interest in it as well, you know. There's quite a few people being interested in in it and see how it goes and um, yeah. So um, RNG, one of our sponsors, that they're keen to you know get something new out there. They sponsor the BSP series and they've um, been supplying me bits and pieces that you know will fit. You know, because a lot of the old stuff on the older bikes, you know, the last model was 2013, I think, was the last CBR 600. So but a lot of that stuff fits, so it's quite good. Obviously, the last time you were here on the Isle of Man was a long, well, it seems a long time ago now, but you've got to think back. Before that, did you ever miss an Isle of Man for so many years since the early 80s when you first came here for, for the Manx and stuff? You didn't miss many, did you? I didn't miss one. No, I was... I did every year from 1983 right the way through to 2019. Um, and in some years I did the Manx as well, mm. um, or the classic TT as well, you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, so it's a, it's a lot of uh, lot of mileage around there. And all of a sudden, maybe I forgot where it, where it goes, though, when we get down to the again next <laughs> left, time. <laughs> left at Quarterbridge, left at Quarterbridge. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously missing the Balan meeting as well, one of your, one of your favourites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, although I officially retired. Yeah, I know that, but you're still, <laughs> you know, you know, you're still, you're still out at Scarborough. You're still, you're still doing bits, but you know, missing Balown, you know, that, that's a big thing. That's a big part of your life, was it? Your bike, bike life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Balown, the Southern Hundred, and and the you know the pre TT meeting and post TT meeting, etc. Was uh, yeah, the club of uh, probably the best in the world. We said before. The, friendly meeting and and I've this is my first road race I ever did in 1983 so even before the Manx uh, that, that year you know um so I, I've really enjoyed the 700 and the ground circuit and yeah you're right I really missed it you know although I wasn't going to be racing there I was probably taking a rider there you know um this year and last year so. did you ever do Jerby Road I can't remember if I asked you that one before yeah I did it once hmm. uh and that was 
that was 83 as well thing. And I actually had a broken collarbone, <laughs> which I got from two weeks before at Snetterton. Um, and I was in that race at Snetterton, um, like I was just starting out really, um, it was 83 or 84, I think it was 83. And, and Barry Sheen was actually still riding. That's how long ago it was. And, uh, it was the race of aces meeting yeah. and Ray, <clears throat> we went there with, um, Ray Cowles, who was sponsoring me. And he said, um, oh, we'll take the RG. He said, we didn't write, you know, and this was a really old RG compared to, you know, Barry Sheen's or all the other guys, you know, and I was starting out anyway. <clears throat> and I did practice and, you know, I was getting blown into the weeds because I, I can, you know, I wasn't up to that level really then. I was just sort of just about national level. So obviously I had a national license and it was a national meeting from that, if I remember right. And um, and I remember going into the first corner and the the engine goes quite, in those days it was quite common, like in two strokes to seize on you and spit you off or whatever, you know, and you end up in the corner. So I went to the first corner and the engine sort of went slightly quiet and I grabbed the clutch <laughs> and thought, hmm, was that, was that a seizure? No. So you come out of the corner thinking you're upright mm-hmm. compared to racing speed, but I dumped the clutch and yeah, it had seized. So <laughs> I went through the screen, um, night in, you know, typical thing, you know, it's grass, medical center, ambulance, <laughs> hospital. Um, so I was, I was knocked out and broke collarbone. So anyway, so two weeks later then, um, uh, went to, uh, the Jerby road and, and I, I remember I had a figure of eight, uh, bandage on around me, around my shoulders mm-hmm. now, trying to keep me upright sort of thing. And, and, um, how oh, I rode the thing, I don't know, cause it was pushed start mm. on that, on that long straight. Yeah. 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 And I pushed it and cause they, they were quite high in those days and I'm quite small. So, <laughs> and I couldn't get it going. I'm last away. The time got it going, every gone. So I came through, and I think I finished sixth on it. And I really enjoyed it. But once I got going, the adrenaline kicked in and it didn't hurt so much. But pushing the thing was terrible. <laughs> but uh, that was my experience with it. But the length of that straight is huge. You know? it, it, is, it is long, isn't it? People talk about the big with the seven, is the, the seven mile straight they used to have over there, the old Ulster Grand Prix track years ago. There's a massive long straight there, year, years before you were even riding and stuff like that. Back to the Isle of Man, though, because obviously it has a big place for your heart for, for coming here. We can see all the trophies up above your head there. You know, that's how much this place yeah. means you. You have them all on display. And to miss it for a couple of years and then plan to come back for next year. Any plans in place for that? For an Ian Locker team to be here, TT especially? Yeah. Um, we plan to do the same as we were planning in 2020, which, which is um, Jim Hind will join us on one of the Mark Coverdale patterns. He's a good lad, isn't he? Like double. He's a very good lad and yeah, a nice yeah. lad as well. Nice and level-headed, isn't he? Nice and level-headed. He is, he is. You know, and I, I've um, been involved with a lot of young riders and what I've, you know, in the team and stuff. But he, he is uh, he is one smart cookie. Um, I know what, you know, we've been, he's riding, riding for us at Scarborough next week on our ZX6 Kawasaki and the uh, pattern, uh, Italian pattern. So, um yeah, and I followed him around there, you know, and it doesn't take him long to learn something. And he's, you know, he's, he's not like the normal young, sort of hot-headed, you know, like I was when I was that age, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, running wide and, you know, taking risks. He, he really is, or looks to, to be anyway, really level-headed. So he'll be joining us um, on the our pattern. He's got his own other sponsor, I think, lined up for 600 and I think a Suzuki as well in the, in the big class. Um, because he's a good two, he's a good two fifty lad as well, isn't he? You're going to run one of them again. Yeah, he's got his own two fifty, which he bought himself. Um, so he's going to ride that at Scarborough. Oh, you brilliant. Know, okay. I guess the classic TT as well. Okay. Uh, so we, we, you know, he beat me the last time in the classic TT. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and, um, he did. Yeah, and he had a thirty second penalty. <laughs> so he, um, yeah, he's that good. So um, really good. Um, so, but so, yeah, maybe, so, so maybe James Hind at the TT for Ian Locker, is that possibly uh, something to just put out there for the moment? Yeah, that's what he'll be riding. He'll be riding one of our patterns, um, but not on the other bikes. He's got mm-hmm. his own sponsors for the others. Um, Stefano Benetti will be joining mm-hmm. us on, uh, on one of the patterns. Um, and um, Joe Laughlin also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Joe joined us, and he's going to be doing a couple of BSPs for us this year, just to keep his hand in. Um, and he's um, he did very well for us. He rode for us in 2019, 
and the, at the Ilster and never ridden a thing before and finished second twice, mm -hmm. almost won both the Super Twins races. He did, yeah, uh, he again, very another, well, very well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really talented lad and a nice, nice lad as well, you know. Don't you wish you were their age again? <laughs> um, no. With the experience I've got now, yeah, <laughs> not 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 like not like starting out again. And remember how hot headed and you know not a hot headed, uh, maybe not the right word to put it, but you're just twenty and twenty one or whatever I was when I started nineteen, I think I was started. And you, yeah, to have the, the experience I've got now and be that age, okay. that's why it's nice to be able to to work with someone like the younger lads and and sort of try and. Give them that experience and try and cut corners for them. Mm, you know, okay. you know, a bit like Leon Haslam has got with his dad, and <clears throat> you know, to be able to help and it stops you having those broken collarbones and and puts you out for a, a couple of weeks or a month or whatever, you know, and um, hopefully it makes it a little bit safer as well, you know. There's a lot of the the older races are still going. You've got John, you've got Bruce, you've got all the other guys at the TT, but they've got to watch themselves, haven't they? You know, you've got young. Young Hind coming up, Joe Locke and another one coming up. Lots of good young talent coming up, so they better start looking over their shoulders, better they? Mm, yeah, and two years away from it as well, you know. Well, mm. well that'll help the older riders because they know where they're going more mm. than the younger riders don't. Or, I don't know, or whether they're two years older, obviously, as well. You know, like uh, Michael Rutter and uh, John McGuinness, they're... 50. 64 50. now, is it? Like no, 64. no, no, 78. Just a year, just a year behind you, 77. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I lie about my age. <laughs> well, we, we know this. Listen, it, it, it has been really nice to speak. And uh, you got a new dog as well since we talked to you last year, which is quite nice. Has that kept you busy a bit? It has, yeah. It's been fantastic. You know, um, um, yeah, my my dad died in November there with uh, oh, COVID. Oh, sorry, to, so, sorry to hear that. Yeah, sorry to hear that. I did hear. Yeah, it. no, sorry thanks. Yeah, no, it's um, he was in a home and then uh, you know, uh, COVID got into the home and mm. killed him. He's ninety three, so you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, what you say, you know, really. And then, but as his mum um, uh, fell down the stairs in in Japan, so she had to go home oh, slightly goodness. earlier. So that was a bit of a chaos, you know, with the COVID and things. Uh, so it was nice to have the dog, you know, uh, Tiki, we call her, she's a miniature schnauzer, so it was nice to have her and, uh, you know, have something to, you know, focus on a little bit. You know? 